So welcome back. Uh, let's now talk about this practical example for evaluate risk estimation. Um, this is all done in uh, R. Um, we start out by loading the library T-series. We again get those uh, historical quotes for Microsoft and IBM stocks. Um, we take the uh, log differences in the prices and this gives you the log returns in line six and seven. So Y1 and Y2, those are uh, the uh, returns. Um, we cut out some data and then we immediately uh, combine those two columns in line 13 by C bind and we get a matrix uh, for those two stocks. We set the confidence level at 1% uh, and we have a value of our portfolio of 1000. That's not too interesting. Um, and then we calculate the multivariate expected shortfall using historical simulation. So we start by sorting Y1. We sort the returns. Uh, we calculate the smallest um, by taking T times P, the confidence level times the length of this uh, column. We should have defined it here. Yes, T in line 10 is uh, the length of uh, Y1. Um, we, we are looking for uh, the index of the value uh, that is right at the 1% quantile. And then historical simulation is if we have sorted Y in YS, the var1 is simply minus ys at this position op, for example, at the 10th or 15th index times the $1,000 or um, index or no, uh, $1,000 or euros. And the var estimate by historical simulation is almost $65 for this $1,000 investment. Um, actually, um, let me just see if, yes, we are going back to the expected shortfall. Um, we then calculate the VAR using historical simulation. In the multivariate case, we assume that we have portfolio weights 30 and 70% in line 2. We then calculate the portfolio returns and then in line 5, 6, 7, 8, we do the same. We simply look uh, for um, the portfolio returns, we sort them, and when then we take uh, the uh, observation at that index of the 1% quantile times 1000. And for the portfolio, uh, we get a VAR of $51.16 or euros. Now the expected shortfall is now what? It's the mean of those sorted portfolio, uh, no, of those sorted um, returns from one from the first position until the VAR. And uh, because we want to give it out as a positive number, uh, we switch the sign on this mean and then we get the expected shortfall of 91.54 euros or dollars. Uh, we can do the same for the portfolio. We haven't done this yet. So we now want uh, to estimate um, our risk model. We first lo load the FGARGE package, which is, I guess, the best one available in R for GARGE models. G is... Um, um, set to be a GARGE 1.1 model using normally distributed innovations. Um, we include um, no mean um, and we estimate it on Y1. So the, um, the log returns of the first, I think this was Microsoft stock. Uh, we get the omega and alpha and the beta uh, parameters. And then we calculate sigma 2, uh, sigma squared, the variances via omega plus alpha times the squared uh, last uh, return plus beta, the estimated beta coefficient times um, the, um, I think this should be the residuals. Now what we're doing is actually this is a forecast. We are doing this for t plus one. We're taking uh, the, if this is our data sample, we are taking the uh, parameters estimated in sample and then we forecast this onto the next day. And then the VAR is simply the square root because we are assuming normally distributed innovations. We know that, well, square root of the variance times the uh, Z quantile Q norm of P gives you, um, um, gives you uh, the value at risk for normally distributed random variable. Again, times the value times 1000. 
and we get a VAR forecast for T plus one, the last day, now the next day after our sample of 30.16. We import the data. Uh, we do this next uh, on this um, data. I, I'm not, this should be Goldman Sachs, I think. Uh, again, we differentiate, uh, we, we estimate the log differences in the prices. Uh, we need some preliminary work. Uh, we need an estimation window. Uh, what we are now doing is um, EWMH, um, a more uh, a simpler uh, time series model with the um, exponentially weighted moving average. Um, I don't want to go into the details. What you need to know is that you need to take the model, you need to set up those parameters. For example, we do this in line nine, and then we need to calculate, most importantly, um, the variances and standard deviations, and then we make a forecast. Uh, we then do uh, continue to do this. We do forecasts, and then we also do a backtesting. Uh, we again load the FGARCH uh, library, and what we now do is we do historical simulation with Gauge 1 1 fitting with the uh, exponentially weighted moving average model. We get all those VAR models and then we have to backtest them. Uh, so they, VR is the sum of, as you can see, returns um, lower than uh, the VAR. Actually, you know, we sum them up and uh, we look at the VAR. Um, this is the probability. We take the standard deviation and then we plot all those estimates with the VAR. And this is what we get out of this. Black is the actual log returns. Um, and we have in red, uh, turquoise, green and blue, those different lines of the risk forecast. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure the blue line is the ex uh, exponential weighted moving average. This is not rather conservative and the blue and, uh, and uh, red lines, no, actually the uh, turquoise and red lines, uh, they are much closer to um, the actual losses. The question now is if we have too many exceedances, so we have to backtest these. Now you can see there are some losses that, are ex that exceed our VAR forecast. So the Bernoulli back test, which is the Cupid's test, very simple. Uh, you can see uh, the sum of V, uh, P is the probability. We define this uh, Bernoulli test uh, by uh, inserting a vector of the um, exceedances and the probability level. Um, this is how it's uh, calculated. You need to calculate the test statistics. Uh, we have for independence coverage, uh, we have this matrix. As you can see, those are the um, <laughs> those are the um, transition probabilities, simply coded in R. Um, it takes a lot of space uh, to um, program all this, and then you return the likelihood quotient. This is what comes out, and then you make this test. Uh, you can see we have the exponentially weighted moving average, moving average, historical simulation and gauge. Actually, I'm pretty sure the moving average model is the worst one of these four. And then you perform those tests and uh, you get uh, the test statistics and the p-values. For example, here you can see uh, the test statistics uh, for the Bernoulli test of unconditional coverage and the independence test. And as you can see, uh, the p-values are quite different. For example, um, the gauge model and the independence model here, now the, for the gauge model, the Bernoulli and the independence says, they turn out nicely, but actually um, the number of exceedances, for example, the historical simulation and moving average, uh, the, uh, they perform rather badly here. Okay, so this is back testing in R. Please check this and try to use these programs yourself. Uh, they are also available in R. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that they are also available in an R package, maybe in the uh, quantitative risk management uh, library, um, but they are not too difficult uh, to program them yourself. Okay, and then VAR estimation with the gauge models. How would you do this? Um, let the price be the time series of the prices. Uh, PT, we use again the continuous log returns. 
Uh, in the next step, we intend to model the common distribution, the joint distribution of those D assets. The marginal modeling is to be done using gauge 1 1 models using T distributed innovations. Then the gauge 1 1 model is given by, we know this, uh, mean plus uh, sigma times z, and the standard, um, no, the variances are given as a function of the squared returns and uh, previous uh, variances and the innovations are IID T distributed. Now next uh, we assume that the vectors of the innovations are distributed according to a function, a joint distribution with marginals F1 through FD and a copula, a conditional copula actually in this case C. So we need to We've already assumed that the innovations come from a T distribution. We now have to impose a conditional time varying copula to have a joint model for those um, innovations. And then we uh, simulate from that joint distribution of innovations and plug it into the marginal gauge 1 1 models. So simply, we assume a balanced portfolio for which the portfolio returns are given by, well, equal weights. That's then the parameters of the model are then estimated based on the first capital T observed values. We are using these T values to forecast for the next day and then we shift our ensemble to the next day. So we are doing, we are using 10,000 simulated observations of the estimated copula. We transform them to ZT using the T quantile function. We transform ZT into simulated returns. Um, there is Actually, there is a typo here. We have to check this. It's mu plus sigma times z. Uh, this has has to be deleted here. Uh, and then we calculate the simulated portfolio returns, check the var, and then do backtesting. And this is what comes out of it. This is a four-dimensional portfolio. And we have a 300-day out-of-sample. These are out-of-sample forecasts. This, the black line are the portfolio returns and you have different models in green and blue for the VARs. And as you can see, we have an observation. Uh, this one actually here is a VAR exceedance for the red estimate and not for the green one. And we do have some observations that exceed the VAR barrier for both models. And then you can do backtesting. Okay, so this is risk forecasting in contrast to estimation. This is backtesting and a very practical example how to do this using especially gauge models and uh, historical simulation and moving average models uh, in R. So if you don't have any questions, let's stop here again. And uh, next week we'll continue with extreme value theory, which is something completely different, uh, which has a more insurance mathematic touch to it because extreme value theory is used extensively in non-life insurance where you model losses from say car insurance uh, but it's also very important uh, in modeling tail risks uh, in market and credit risk so let's stop here and continue next week thank you